Welcome everyone to our opening session of the second annual Open Texas Conference. My name is Ursula Pike. I use she, her pronouns, and I am the Associate Director of the Digital Higher Education Consortium of Texas. Next slide, please. We will start today with a land acknowledgement. I'm a member of the Karuk tribe. Our homeland is on the Pacific coast near Mount Shasta. The Open Texas 22 Steering Committee acknowledges the lands on which this conference is being held virtually. Next slide, please. What we now call Texas had and continues to have one of the largest and most diverse communities of indigenous peoples in North America. We acknowledge the federally recognized tribes, including the Alabama Cushada tribe of Texas, the Kickapoo traditional tribe of Texas, and the Isleta del Sur Pueblo. We honor the state recognized tribes, including the Lipan Apache tribe and the Texas band of Yaqui Indians. We recognize the Coahuitacan, Mescalero Apaches, Tonkawa, Karankawa, Eastern Pueblo, Cato, Cariso, Comicrudo, and Comanche or Numunu in their language. We acknowledge and honor these nations as the first peoples of this land from which they were forcibly removed. They're important parts of not only the history of this area, but also its continuing knowledges of this place. Next slide, please. And as important as it is to recognize the legacy of the indigenous populations of this land, we must also acknowledge that native people remain here, living among us, teaching and learning. Next Friday is the Texas American Indian Heritage Day, and I'd encourage you to find out more about today's Texas indigenous populations. Thank you. I have the honor of introducing our conference chair, Rebecca Karoff. Many open education practitioners here in Texas know Dr. Karoff and her passion for OER. Rebecca has guided our committee throughout the planning process to help us get where we are with you now today with patience, humor, and endless support. In addition to championing this year's Open Texas Conference, Rebecca's work centers on expanding student success. Rebecca is the primary architect of the UT System Student Success Framework and collaborates with institutional colleagues across the UT System to ensure student financial well being, effective advising, and student sense of academic and social belonging. She leads strategy on open educational resources, strengthening curricular innovation, and working with faculty to embrace their roles in student success. I think I could speak for all of us on the steering committee and all of the planning committees when I say we are very lucky to have Rebecca in our corner. And on behalf of the committees and open education champions here in Texas, I want to thank you all Thank you for all of your generosity, encouragement, and support. Rebecca, thanks so much. And now I'll hand things off to you. Thank you, Ursula. I am Rebecca Karoff. I use she, her pronouns, and I am so excited and honored to welcome you all to the Open Texas 2022 conference, the second annual. I'm beyond grateful that you are making time to join us over the course of the next three days. As Ursula mentioned, I work on all things student success with extraordinary colleagues at our UT system institutions across Texas and across the nation. I am one of those odd people who spent their whole professional lives working in university systems and I view post-secondary systems as catalysts for change, collectively impacting the lives of hundreds and thousands of students, families and communities across the uh, across multiple distinct and yet interdependent institutions. I believe systems are not only uniquely positioned, but also have the responsibility to address systemic inequities and in institutionalized racism. Next slide. 
Systems are conveners, we are connectors. We exist when we do our jobs right to amplify and elevate the work of our campuses and support people, collaboration and cross fertilization, all in service to helping our students be successful in meeting their educational, professional and personal goals to live meaningful lives. Conferences like Open Texas do similar things, bringing people to people together with shared and multifaceted goals around OER and open everything, amplifying and elevating the work you, we do, and generating collaboration and cross-fertilization. Texas is known for many things. What I wanna emphasize here as we open this conference is that Texas has remarkable racial, ethnic, religious, linguistic, political, cultural, and other kinds of diversity. The state has enviable demographics that represent the best opportunity this country has to fulfill the unfinished agenda for a just and equal society. Let me proudly say that the Texas OER, open and higher education communities that I work with and are represented here are open, inclusive and affirming. It's been 20 years since UNESCO adopted the term open educational resources. The conference is an opportunity to reclaim the origins and social justice and motivation to achieve equity and access participation and attainment for students and practitioners. And as we do so, express loudly the need to redouble our commitment to and efforts on behalf of historically excluded and minoritized populations, Black, Latino, Indigenous, Asian, and other communities of color, as well as those excluded by virtue of their income, gender, sexual orientation, ability, and other identities. I do want to pause for a moment to celebrate the open and open education. In a world where everything is monetized, commercialized, and often corporatized, let's celebrate the progress and power of open in the last two decades, globally, nationally, and here in Texas. Let's celebrate the remarkable developments in open pedagogy, data, science, and scholarship, including the new guidance on opening access to federally funded research issued by the White House last month. All this does lead us back to the conference theme, the labor of open education, and the need to unpack, interrogate, and validate what goes into this unprecedented expansion of OER at this moment in time. Next slide. The conference themes you see on the slide here recognize the labor of open education and are designed to probe what that labor entails. All the work that goes into providing OER, the people, the commitment of time and money, the intellectual capital, creativity and productivity, but also the consequences and impacts of labor that can be all too often undervalued and under-resourced. Thanks to outstanding and hardworking colleagues from across Texas, we have put together a dynamic program that unpacks this provocative theme, the labor of open education, that our program committee selected in the early stages of the planning. And thanks to the almost, well actually, thanks to the over 1,000 of you who have registered for the conference. We will go deep together into this topic of the labor of open education over the next few days, exploring its multiple dimensions at a time when the world of open is expanding. Next slide. I wanna recognize the three organizations that are sponsoring the conference. And for many of you, they need no introduction. Digitex or the Digital Higher Education Consortium of Texas, the Texas Digital Library, and the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board. In this opening session that we have named Sharing the Labor of Open Education, you will have a chance to hear about the amazing work led by each of them, admittedly snapshots, snapshots into breathtaking portfolios designed to advance open education and digital learning in ways that are truly transformative. Next slide. Indeed, over the course of the last nine months, longer for some of us, we have shared the labor of open education, embodying the kind of collaboration huge amounts of time and commitment that all of us in the open community are all too familiar with. It's worth mentioning the meta kind of self-referential nature of a conference focused on the labor of open education in which we rely on volunteers who all have full-time day jobs, not to mention caretaking responsibilities at home. And I'm hoping rich personal lives that they will be able to resume after Friday. Next slide. I want to share some of the highlights of the work done by our stellar program committee. You see their names represented on the slide. They crafted the conference theme, keyed so beautifully to this moment in time in collaboration with the steering committee. 
They identified and secured nationally recognized keynote speakers from whom we'll hear today and tomorrow and, and Friday. They reviewed and selected an array of exciting proposals to bring breadth and depth to the program. And they painstakingly developed the conference schedule in collaboration with the Digital Experience Committee, as well as led numerous trainings for speakers and moderators. Next slide. The small and mighty promotion and assessment committee has provided the following kinds of support. If you saw an email or social media post about this conference, this was the committee who made sure you saw it and that it made sense. They coordinated the committee interview blog posts that helped you get to know this year's committee members. I hope you enjoyed them as much as I did. Additionally, this committee built our new conference website, opentexas.org, and continues to manage the content there. And I want to give a special shout out to Heather Walker of Digitex for her lead role in the website development. Finally, when you get our conference survey on Friday afternoon, please take it and answer as candidly as you can. The promotion committee developed the survey and will report on the results, and we will all use them to help inform um, the takeaways from this conference and planning for the next. Next slide. And here are some highlights of what the remarkable Digital Experience Committee has been doing. Learned how to use and how to train others to use our virtual conference platform. No small undertaking, especially with a technologically challenged chair like me. They developed, again, painstakingly, the conference schedule online in collaboration with the program committee. They coordinated the live captioning to ensure that all of, all of our conference is accessible to people. They developed tools to support our speakers and moderators and with the program committee led trainings for speakers and moderators. Importantly, this committee member, these committee members will be your on-call team to assist with any of your support requests during the conference. Next slide. Last but not least, I wanna recognize the powerhouse of women who have served on the steering committee. I can't tell you what an absolute honor and joy it has been to work with each of them. I have learned so much from them and I'm not talking about conference planning, although they sure do know what they're doing in that arena. They are all as passionate about social, social gender and racial justice and equity as anyone I've worked with, not to mention they lead complex organizations advancing higher education and the democratization of knowledge and resources. The steering committee and I would also like to thank someone not included on this slide and that person is Dr. Judith Sebesta, formerly the director of Digitex and now the vice president of ISKME Labs at the Institute for the Study of Knowledge Management and Education. At the helm of Digitex, Judith was a co-founder of the Open Texas Conference along with Texas Digital Library. And for the past three years, she helped guide the conference to where we are today. Judy, we thank you and we miss you, but are confident our paths will cross again through your new role at ISKME. Next slide. I wanna take a moment to review with you the code of conduct. Open Texas is dedicated to providing a conference experience that is free from all forms of harassment and inclusive of all people. We know that the best problem solving and critical thinking happens when people with a wide array of experiences and perspectives come together to work in comfort and safety as peers. We therefore expect participants at Open Texas to help create thoughtful and respectful environments where that interaction can take place. I encourage you to read the full code, which is linked on the slide. Um, and while we do not expect this to be necessary, if participants are not adhering to the code, session moderators will be positioned to remove them. If you would like to report a violation, you may email open.ed.texas at gmail.com. Next slide. Finally, a few words about the conference program before I turn to my colleagues. We have two fabulous keynotes. Tomorrow at 10 a.m. we will host, host our first keynote, Jasmine Roberts Cruz of The Ohio State University. Along with her communication expertise, Professor Roberts Cruz is also a renowned open education leader. She has delivered numerous keynote presentations across the country on the topics of inclusion and social justice and open education. On Friday, the final day of the conference, Dr. Karen Cangelosi will share perspective on open education, open science, and embedding social justice into all student success endeavors. We've also scheduled keynote reflection sessions on each day in which we can together go deeper into exploring questions and takeaways raised by our two keynoters. If you've previewed the schedule, you already know that we have an excellent conference ahead of us. 
We have a few opportunities to network and brainstorm together. And we hope to see you later this morning and during our afternoon sessions, as well as tomorrow and Friday. I very much look forward to being invigorated and inspired alongside each of you as we learn together and support each other's work during Open Texas and beyond. Next slide. Let me hand over the virtual podium to three members of the steering committee that share the ways in which they foster open education as part of their mission-driven organizations. Ursula Pike from Digitex, Christy Park from the Texas Digital Library, and Kyla Torre from the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Uh, next slide, please. Great. So again, I'm Ursula Pike, Associate Director of the Digital Higher Ed Consortium of Texas. I also worked on the program committee and got to see firsthand the really hard work that everyone put in. It was exciting. So let me tell you a little bit about Digitex. We assist Texas community colleges in providing learners an education without barriers through high quality digital education opportunities, resources, and services that help students succeed. Now, Digitex was founded back in 1998 as the Virtual College of Texas. You might have heard of us, uh, heard of that organization. And we serve all of Texas's 50 public community college districts. We offer course sharing through a partnership with Acadium to meet the needs of colleges throughout the state who want to give their students the opportunity to attend online courses that they themselves do not offer. Digitex also supports the expansion of OER in Texas through professional development, this conference, uh, and research. We manage the Texas Quality Matters Consortium, which is a group of 30 colleges and universities using the Quality Matters rubric to design quality online courses. Next slide, please. So we partner with the Community College Consortium for Open Educational Resources, which provides educational opportunities for OER. We also um, worked on the Texas Learn OER. We developed that project with um, an amazing woman, Carrie Gitz, who's involved in this, uh, in this conference. If you get to see her present, I definitely encourage you to. Uh, Texas Learn OER is our free online OER training that was the winner last year of the OE Global Open Education Award for Excellence. Um, since Texas Learn OER launched, 317 individuals have completed it and earned certificates, including participants from 15 different states in the US, as well as some international participants. It's a great course in OER, and you can find it on our website. You can also find it on OER text, which I know Kyla Torrey will be talking about later. Next slide, please. One of our biggest projects to support OER is an annual survey and analysis that we do, but not annual, every two years, uh, survey and analysis of the OER landscape in Texas. It's a collaboration between Digitex and the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board and the Institute for the Study of Knowledge Management in Education, or ISCME. It is a thorough and deep analysis of what is happening in Texas in OER. In this, in 2021, 110 different institutions of higher ed across the state completed the survey. And because we are doing it every two years, we can witness long-term trends in the work. So some of the findings from this analysis are that there is continuing to be growth in the commitment to OER at institutions across the state. 45% of institutions surveyed have formal policies or programs in place to support OER. That's compared to 38% in 2019. And about one third of the institutions across the state 
are beginning to provide comprehensive systems-based supports for OER by engaging multiple offices and roles on campus. We think that's important and that will support sustainability of OER projects. But it is true that there were some concerns, some information that we found that raised questions for us. OER professional learning has not increased. At most institutions, less than 10% of their faculty have been trained in OER. That's why this conference is so important. People come to Open Texas to learn and share knowledge. We support the Open Texas Conference because we believe it addresses the needs identified in the landscape analysis, and we hope you will take advantage of this opportunity to engage with OER practitioners across the state. And one thing I like to say, next year we will be surveying again, and so we hope that if you receive a request to participate in the survey in your email inbox that you seriously consider it because it is really helpful, important information. Next slide, please. Thank you for your time. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me through our Digitex uh, website. I now pass the presentation on to Christy Park from Texas Digital Library. Thank you so much, Ursula. As Ursula said, I'm Christy Park and I use she, her pronouns. I'm the executive director of the Texas Digital Library. And I'm really pleased to add my welcome to all of you on behalf of the 29 academic and public libraries that make up the TDL consortium. We are a community-based collaboration funded by our member libraries, which include four-year public and private university libraries, community college libraries and public libraries who work together to advance open access, open data, open education, and long-term digital preservation. TDL is so honored to have worked with our partners here in this session, Digitex and the coordinating board, alongside the dozens of higher ed leaders who served on various planning committees over the past year to co-organize co Open Texas 2022. This year's conference speaks to two of TDL's most cherished and foundational commitments. One is a commitment to free and open access to the tools of learning and research. And the other articulated so beautifully in this year's theme is the centering of the people who do this vital labor in service of students and their institutions. Developing systems, both human and technical, that support this labor and make it sustainable is our mission as an organization. Next slide, please. TDL provides our members with a shared digital and community infrastructure for open access. This includes open access repositories and journal publishing, research data management, and long-term digital preservation. This infrastructure provides free and open access to hundreds of thousands of digital items, research publications, journal articles, research data sets, image collections, and more. Removing financial and geographic barriers to accessing these materials that advance learning and new knowledge creation. Next slide, please. Our OER support services, which we refer to as OER at TDL, extends our commitment to open access to include instructional materials and practice. OER at TDL builds capacity across our 29 institutions for advancing campus efforts to increase adoption of open educational resources. And these services augment and support the work of libraries as leaders in many cases of these efforts uh, on their campuses. We leverage the collect collective expertise of our community in, in a few different ways. So first, TDL is a consortial member of the Open Education Network, providing our members with access to a nationwide community of practice, as well as training on implementation of OER incentive programs, OER textbook publishing, and more. This Consortial membership also allows TDL institutions to join OEN as individual allied members of that group. 
opening up the full suite of institutional member benefits at a pretty hefty discount, more than 85% off the individual member, member um, fee. Additionally, we are leveraging that OEN model and, and its benefits to build a statewide community of practice for OER librarians in Texas through our TDL OER Ambassadors Program. Next slide, please. This program, the OER Ambassadors, has engaged individuals selected through a competitive application process from six institutions to serve the TDL consortium in building up that regional community of practice. The OER Ambassadors program is coordinated by Leah DeForest from Texas Digital Library, and they are the link to the OEN program and serve as a resource for the larger TDL community, providing training and networking opportunities and developing other shared resources. Next slide, please. You can see a timeline on this slide that shows our progression in supporting OER work here in Texas. Since 2018, we've convened libraries to advance OER adoption, served the consortium through the OER Ambassador Program, hosted numerous webinars and training opportunities, and collaborated with our partner organizations here to create this amazing event, the Open Texas Conference. As we continue to grow and improve our service in this space, TDL has decided to take this year to evaluate and assess our current programs in support of open educational resources. We've conducted a survey of our member institutions and are in the process of analyzing those data and considering future paths that will best support the librarians and libraries who are leading OER initiatives on their campuses and across the state. Next slide, please. So I encourage everyone to make sure you hear about what the future holds for OER at TDL and for the TD and for the consortium more generally by signing up for one of, or more of our communication channels. You can use the QR code or the link on this slide um, to do that. If you have questions or would like to partner in support of libraries across the state, please feel free to contact me. Thank you very much. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to our partners at the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board, represented by Kyla Torre. Next slide. Thank you so much, Christy. Um, I'm Kyla Torre. I'm a director in the Division of Digital Learning at the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board. And I am thrilled to be here with all of you for the second annual Open Texas. Um, I look forward to this conference and I uh, adore working with our partners on the steering committee and all of the committees who put this conference together. Uh, we're excited to be here. Next slide, please. Uh, before I get started talking about the work of the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board and Open Education, I just want to introduce you all to the Division of Digital Learning, which is a new division at the Coordinating Board or a relatively new. Um, it started in November of 2020 uh, with the mission of providing leadership and advocacy for digital learning in higher education and promoting, sustaining, and advancing a quality digital learner experience, positioning Texas as a world leader and resulting in globally competitive, digitally proficient citizens. Uh, the Division of Digital Learning has many different projects, but open education is one of our focuses um, and we do this in a variety of ways. Next slide, please. Our goals in the division have been to, to increase awareness, build capacity, and recognize digital excellence across the state. And this, of course, includes the excellent work that's being done in OER uh, across Texas. Uh, we work with a variety of partners, which I'll talk about later, and we try to uh, move the needle on OER work in Texas as much as we are able to alongside those partners. Next slide, please. The team of the Division of Digital Learning consists of Dr. Michelle Singh, who is our Assistant Commissioner, Amy Zandi, uh, Carrie Gitz, and Gwen Morell are new additions to our team, and we're very happy to have them. Marianne Maddox and Liz Tolman are our program directors and Shannon Dagenhart is our project manager. We are a small but mighty team um, and we uh, are happy to, to be in our position at the coordinating board in order to listen, support, serve, and partner. Next slide, please. 
So our philosophy and in the division of digital learning is to listen first and then use that use the information that we have gathered to build programs and services for our institutions and for our partners across the state. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how we listen and then serve support and partner. Next slide, please. First, listening. So we started uh, very close to the initiation of the Division of Digital Learning with a user design research engagement along with the University of Texas at Austin School of Design and Creative Technologies. Um, we did focus groups with faculty administrators and students. We did uh, digital uh, interviews. Um, and the findings of that study were really that faculty administrators, students are looking to contribute to the world of digital learning. They're looking to collaborate and they're looking to celebrate. Um, so that means they're looking for chances to contribute content, to talk to each other, and to recognize the work that they've been doing. We also did a, a survey with faculty. Um, we had about 3,000 responses from faculty members about their experience of digital learning. Um, and, and we also, of course, partner with Digitex to do the biennial OER landscape survey, and we've done two rounds of that, as Ursula mentioned. Out of that biennial OER landscape survey, we decided to take that data and go a little bit deeper and try to look at um, particular regions in Texas. So we're engaged in this regional analysis now where we're looking at differences in adoption across regions and across institutions in Texas. Um, looking into the reasons, both quantitatively and qualitatively, why OER, some institutions adopt and use OER at a higher rate than others. Um, if you're interested in some of the findings of that OER regional analysis, uh, there is a session with ISKME, the Institute for the Study of Knowledge and Management in Education that's going on this afternoon as part of one of the micro sessions. Um, and I would encourage you to go and learn more about the OER regional analysis. <laughs> We're also doing an OER content gap analysis. So we're looking particularly at highly transferable courses, particularly those who are leading to majors in high need fields and determining what OER is out there that is available for those courses. Is it peer reviewed? When was it developed? Um, and uh, lots of different details about the particular OER that's available for those courses. And then where, which courses uh, potentially need OER developed um, or need ancillaries developed, whatever the case may be. So that uh, content gap analysis findings will be coming out later this year. So we take all of this information and we try to serve our institutions. Next slide, please. We have a variety of ways in which we do this. One of them is the OER state grant program, the state funded grant program. Uh, we will be in 2022, 2023 in the third round of the state grant program. It started in 2018 with course redesign grants to 15 faculty members uh, to redesign courses using solely OER. In 2020, in the second round, we did two types of grants, implementation grants for adopting existing OER and development grants for creating new OER, and those went to 20 faculty members. And look forward to the upcoming request for applications for this grant program uh, that should be coming out in winter, end of 2022, beginning of 2023. We also have GEAR funded grants. This is the Governor's Emergency Education Relief Fund that came out of the, the Federal CARES Act for coronavirus relief. Um, and we did implementation and development grants out of that that went to 58 faculty uh, for, for 58 courses at a variety of different institutions across the state to redesign courses using only OER. And for those grants, we partnered with what we call technical assistance partners, and those were OpenStax, Dana Center at UT Austin, and Dallas College. And those were uh, organizations, institutions that were advanced in their OER work that offered assistance to the grantees, whether it be in learning more about open pedagogy or the technical aspects of, of creating an OER and posting it online. Um, so we thank our technical assistance partners for all the work that they did in working with those grantees. 
a couple of things that are upcoming um, in the ways that we hope to serve our institutions. One is the Texas OER playbook. Um, we've been working with the ISCME and also uh, representatives from institutions across Texas who are sort of our Texas stars. And uh, we are developing a playbook for OER to support institutions and in building capacity and driving systems change around OER work. Um, that playbook is being currently drafted. So it will be posted in the OER Texas repository, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and it will be available free and openly licensed to anyone who wants to learn more about how to build or scale OER programs on their campuses. We also have the ONE project, which is the OER Nursing Essentials project. Um, this is a project in the sort of beginning stages. We completed a discovery phase in partnership with OpenStax at Rice University uh, to determine the feasibility of creating OER for nursing courses, particularly OER that's aligned to the new um, AACN Essentials curriculum. So this is this new nursing curriculum that was launched last fall, and um, we're looking into how it would be possible to create OER for, for those nursing courses. Next slide, please. We also try to support the OER community across the state. Um, we do this in a variety of ways. Of course, one of the findings of the OER landscape survey was that professional development is needed. So we've been offering a variety of professional development opportunities, a couple of uh, core elements academies, which are foundational academies, um, an advanced skills academy in OER, a creator communities academy in OER for really diving into the creation of OER. Um, those were all done in partnership with ISCME um, and we plan more in the future. Uh, we also in, in uh, February of 2022, in partnership with OpenStax, did a Creator Fest OER Texas edition, which was a conference, but more of a hackathon style conference where uh, OER, members of the OER community got together to think about what it means to create quality OER, think about peer review. Um, and, and it was a, a really excellent time. Uh, the videos are available online on OER Texas if you're interested in that. And then upcoming, we have a couple of things. Um, one is that OER Texas, our statewide repository for OER is turning two. Uh, and so next week we're going to have uh, the OER Texas Celebration Week where we'll do a variety of, of workshops around how best to use OER Texas, how to use the tools uh, to talk to some faculty and others who have been actively involved in using OER Texas and, and learn the possibilities there. So look for uh, an announcement about that. And then in November, from November 7th through 11th, we'll be, uh, we'll be doing a Texas Digital Learning Week, which is inspired by the National Distance Learning Week. Um, and during that time, we'll be launching sort of a, a new look for OER Texas. Um, so stay tuned for that in November. Um, it will involve not only uh, spotlighting work in OER, but also innovative digital spaces, um, and, and other work that is being done at Texas institutions around digital learning. Next slide, please. And lastly, we partner. We could not possibly do all of this alone. Um, we need a variety of partners to help us uh, get all this work done and, and bring all of these uh, programs to you all. So of course, for this Open Texas Conference, we partner with Digitex and the Texas Digital Library. We partner with ISCME to build and maintain the OER Texas repository and to do professional learning and research. And we partner with OpenStax, uh, Charles A. Dana Center and Dallas College as our technical assistance partners for our grants. And of course, OpenStax also uh, for the Creator Fest OER Texas edition and for the discovery phase of the OER Nursing Essentials project. Next slide, please. If you've not yet visited the OER Texas repository, it is a digital library of openly licensed resources that is designed for Texas higher education. Um, it is there for you. And as I said, it's celebrating its two year anniversary this 
just about today. <laughs> and um, it, and we're going to be celebrating that next week with a variety of workshops. And I'll, I'll let you know how you can learn more about that. Um, in two years, we've had over 240,000 users in OER Texas, and those are users not only from Texas, but across the nation and across the world. Uh, it's, we've had a variety of groups, community groups pop up. We have hubs for different institutions where they showcase their work. Um, it's become a community spot uh, for the OER community in Texas, and uh, we hope that if you haven't yet checked it out that you will go to oertx.higheredtexas.gov and take a look. Um, and again, happy two year anniversary to OER Texas. Next slide, please. There are a couple of ways that you can learn more about the work that's being done at the coordinating board. Um, I've touched on a few things that we're doing we have a lot more projects going on within OER and within uh, digital learning more broadly. Um, there is a group on OER Texas that's called the THECB Digital Learning News and Events Group. Um, if you go to our OER Texas and create a free account, you can join that group and you will learn, you will be one of the first to learn about new projects and new programs that we have uh, coming out. You can also go to um, our Gov delivery site to receive digital learning e-updates. Um, and you can feel free, I'll put my email up at the end. You can feel free to email me, of course, for, for more uh, information. But if you go to Gov delivery, you can check the box that says you're interested in digital learning and you will receive uh, things like our announcement for the state grant RFA, any sort of digital learning official announcements that go out to the institutions. Next slide, please. So that is it. I Again, I'm Kyla Torrey, Director of Digital Learning at, at the Coordinating Board. My email is there, kyla.torrey at highered.texas.gov. And feel free to reach out. I love to hear from the OER community. Um, we appreciate feedback. We appreciate ideas. We appreciate uh, any comments that you want to give. So please. Uh, feel free to reach out or to go to the uh, the OER Texas group or connect with us on Gov Delivery. Next slide, please. And now we've come to the end of our pl opening plenary session. So I just want to reiterate a couple of things. Um, as Rebecca mentioned, we start off tomorrow and Friday with keynotes from Jasmine Roberts Cruz and Karen King Lucy. Um, on Thursday at 9 a.m., everyone is invited for a group discussion on engaging leadership, faculty, and student groups in pursuit of sustainable OER programs. That will be an interactive session uh, where, where we discuss that topic and should be very lively, so please come. Um, there's a final morning coffee session on Friday morning at 9 a.m. If you wanna come have an, an informal chat and get to know members of the, of the OER community in Texas and beyond. Um, and then our last session will be Friday at 4 p.m. We'll have a brief wrap up section to sort of reflect, to get some feedback on Open Texas 2022, to plan for the future and to celebrate this, this conference and this community. We are so, thankful that you decided to join us for Open Texas 2022. We hope that you enjoy the conference. Um, again, if you have any need for assistance, please email open.ed.texas at gmail.com. Um, and we thank you for being here and please go and enjoy your next session.